Okay, let's take a look at the HCS08. It's a very simple CPU, and what it has is it has registers you're going to find in all microcontrollers. Every microcontroller will have an ALU or arithmetic and logic unit, and this is for dealing with things like addition and subtraction for the arithmetic part. Logic part is for things like anding, oring, and exclusive oring. Now you also find that this has a condition code register, sometimes called a status register. And what you're going to find is that there's four bits here used for things like if this number is greater than this number, less than this number, less than or equal to this number, those decisions are made at the hardware level based on N, which is your, your most significant bit of your result, and uh, Z, which is a zero bit, which says is this number zero? because zero is special, all other numbers aren't. And you have C for unsigned overflow, which is a carrier borrow. And you have signed overflow here, that if you add two positives, you get a negative, or two negatives, and get a positive, which we'll look at later, that is a signed overflow. So all of these bits here, N, Z, V, and C, are common to all microcontrollers out there. That's why we're going to spend some time on that. We also have up here something called a program counter. And the program counter keeps track of the address of the next instruction, and you find that every microcontroller has one of those. You also find something called a stack pointer. And the stack pointer will contain the address typically of the top of RAM, and what you're going to find is your variables will sit at the top of RAM, and as you add more variables it grows down, the stack grows down, and uh, it's used for not only variables, to store variables, but it's also used for return addresses for functions, and it's also used for interrupt service routines. So the stack pointer is a common register for all microcontrollers. Now what you're going to find in this particular microcontroller, it's interesting, that if you have something like char a, then that variable will be processed through this accumulator. If you have char star b, then it's going to be processed through here because pointers, as you know, contain address values and this deals with address values on this side and this deals with data values on this side. So microcontrollers sort of combine it, but it's a lot easier to get the concept of data values or data variables and address variables or pointers over here are dealt with differently. Now over here on the control side we have a clock and the clock is generated uh, external to the CPU by a, an oscillator and then from that oscillator the CPU generates this clock signal. Now the clock signal basically provides synchronization of data transfers on the data bus. You've heard the term parallel synchronous. Well everything that the CPU does is parallel with uh, the data bus information being sent out on here and those data transfers are synchronized to the clock. Now you notice here that the address bus over here is one direction out. You'll find here that the data bus over is bi-directional. Sometimes information is going to come in, sometimes information is going to go out. And the thing that controls that is the read-write line. If you're reading, that means information, as you would normally have for yourself, information comes in if you think of yourself as a CPU. If you're writing, you're sending stuff out, and so stuff will go out in this direction out on the data bus. So the read-write line controls the direction of data flow on the bidirectional data bus. Now we've seen already things like loads and stores and loads and stores are what's going to change the read-write line. If you load something it's going to come in and typically on our microcontroller here you load the accumulator. That means information is coming in, the data bus is into the CPU as you're doing a read and if you want to store that out again then if you want to store the accumulator out to memory like address 80 then the read write line will drop low and this information that's in the accumulator will go out to address 80 here. The last thing we want to talk about briefly is interrupts and the concept of interrupt and you might have seen this on just about every PC ever built or every computer there's a reset and all it does is it drops the voltage low and it resets your computer back to a known state and so whether it's resets, IRQs, or whatever, it's a voltage that drops low that executes a special bit of software called an interrupt service routine, and those will be covered in a later course.